Before completing its journey to the sea, the Ganga looks like this. Interweaving land with sea, these mighty estuaries form the world's biggest river delta called the Sundarbans. The river separates these islands from the rest of the country. Yet, it's the only link that connects them too. Every need of human life here depends on these boats. Being cut off from the mainland, the grid has not reached many remote islands of the Sundarbans as yet. And so, diesel is an integral part of life in the Sundarbans. While the markets manage to get electricity from diesel generators, the households largely use kerosene lamps. But things are beginning to change. These are absolutely off-grid islands uh, with no access to the main grid. So when we, uh, we interacted with these people for about three years, starting from April of 2011, and uh, they sort of indicated to us that they'll be very happy with a solution that can provide them with uh, lighting needs. So they said, if you can give us two to three light points in our house and um, one mobile charging point, and, and you charge us less than 200 rupees a month, so it really doesn't matter to us how expensive the system is. Tanya is a field officer with Melinda, an organization that provides clean and affordable source of energy to the villagers of Sundarbans. Today, she is busy supervising the installation of a solar pico grid in one of the villages. It's a system which provides clean lighting to nearly six to ten households or shops. The solar technology is not new to the Sundarbans. A large number of houses use solar home lighting systems, a standalone system that lights up an individual household. Apart from this, there are solar mini grids installed by the state government, which supply electricity to markets and households in some of the bigger villages. But such is the demand for clean energy that even these shops and houses want to avail Melinda's Pico Grid service. And for villages which are totally unelectrified, it is indeed a great respite. The light we get from home lighting system cannot be used for a very long time. During monsoon, it doesn't even get fully charged. I need more light as I have a big family. Now that we have the solar powered battery system, why would we continue using a diesel generator? Diesel is expensive and has other problems associated with it. In 2013, Melinda found the opportunity to expand its initiative under a UK Research Council funded program called OASIS implemented by Terry and a consortium of research institutions led by De Montfort University. This program was looking to support sustainable local solutions in unelectrified regions of South Asia. In case of Melinda Foundation, uh, the OSS project provided viability cap funding at around 30% of the to total project cost, mainly to reduce the monthly installment being paid by the users. In this case, the users have taken loan from the bank and the OASIS project fund is utilized to reduce the uh, EMI to make the projects more affordable to the end users. 
Melinda's business model works through joint liability groups, meaning an informal group of six to ten members from the local community who come together for the purpose of availing a bank loan to buy a solar pico grid against mutual guarantee, a group which needs to give no collateral to the bank. Innovative thing in this entire project is the people are organized into the joint liability groups. Individually, uh, the unit doesn't become viable, but as a joint liability group, the unit is viable. Seeing the potential of this, United Bank has already come forward and given it as a loan. See, again, this model is different in this aspect also. It's a loan-based model. It is not a grant-based model. Melinda set up around 100 Pico grids under the Oasis project, the financing for which was provided by NABARD, to meet the capital cost of the systems. The viability gap funding was provided by the Oasis project. The loan is being repaid by the community through small monthly installments. That's 180 rupees per month for a typical household that gets three LED bulbs, a mobile charging point and regular maintenance. Compare this with its earlier expenditure of 230 rupees per month on kerosene. Shops that earlier paid a daily tariff of 70 rupees on diesel now pay 60 rupees for clean solar light. With a payback period of five years, these communities will eventually own the Pico Grid systems. This system has been working well, and I'm very happy to tell you that uh, we've had 100% repayments over the last, what, 15 months now. Melinda is now looking to scale up. But there are challenges. The problem with scaling is that the bank infrastructure is growing now. There is a problem of power. There is a problem of bank connectivity. So we are making do with small banks that are there, the PACs, the cooperative, cooperative banks which are there on the, just to open an account. But they don't have an electronic format. All dealings have to be in cash. Um, there's no checkbook account over there. So one method to do it is to agglomerate these loans. Okay, so Melinda or uh, another NGO or a third institution can become the one who will agglomerate these loans because they are priority sector loans and there should be some kind of a preference given to them. Uh, in some conveniences you know, if, uh, extended to them by the Reserve Bank or, or through NABAD or somebody so that they can lend them at this low rate. So we need intervention at a slightly higher level. We are making do with our funds. Uh, sometimes we get help from uh, organizations like Terry through the OSS project. Sometimes we get help through the CSR from public sector companies, but that just takes us a little more and a little more. But if this thing was looked at in, 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 in a total totalitarian kind of an approach, uh, possibly uh, we could scale it at a national level. If such an intervention does bring low-cost loans with flexible terms and conditions to rural communities, who can collectively own and manage decentralized energy systems themselves, there's reason to believe that solar energy can expand faster and sustain longer. I'm not pushy. We are very happy as we never thought that kerosene could ever be replaced. And now we see solar light has lit up our life so much. We are really proud of it. For studying, cooking and any other work, this home lighting system has been very beneficial. But during monsoon, it's difficult to charge the system. Seeing our needs, we opted for this. Yet, we are unable to use appliances such as fans. We hope to get more solar power in future.